We're going to go ahead and get started today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are hosting Graph Gurus 40 today. Um, and it's part five of our G-SQL writing best practices. And we're going to be focusing on data structure optimization. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items. So um, Shinyu, if you could go to the next slide. Great. And so everyone's muted. So if you have any questions, you can um, use the Q&A tab to um, ask questions about the content that we're presenting today. But if you have any um, questions for us the, as panelists or if you're having any sound issues or anything like that, please use chat. And we're recording the webinar today and we'll go ahead and send you the recording. Um, and then I'm going to also share the slides with you in a, in a couple minutes via the chat so you can click on the link and get the slides. Uh, again, if you have any problems, just reach out to me via the chat. So right now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Shinyu for the presentation today. Great, thank you, Emily. So in the beginning, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm Xinyu Cheng. I'm the director of customer, sol uh, customer solutions from Tegragraph. So I have been with the company for almost six years. And I actually, I'm one of the author of the GSQL query. I implemented many features of this GSQL language. And also I worked with a lot of major customers, uh, like uh, I developed the solutions for them. Uh, they are across like a, mon like a very, uh, different industries. Okay, so that's about myself. And the, today, uh, you know, we are going to talk about uh, data structure optimization. This is the fifth episode of this series, and uh, uh, this is also the final episode. So uh, today, uh, the data structure optimization is what is the not one of is the most important thing when we optimize the query because what data structure we define we define is directly uh, in, it directly impacts the performance and the memory utilization so this is very very important and hopefully it won't take very long for today's talk because uh, we only have a, a few uh, items to cover okay first I'll talk about uh, what data structures will slow you down uh, and then I'll uh, I'll talk about, so based on those problems, how do we optimize your data structure? And then I will review and conclude the entire query, rest, uh, query writing best practice series, okay? So let's start with what data structure uh, slow you down? Uh, there are two things. So first, the thing is container operation, uh, operations. So for uh, what are the container operations? I think the container operations can be like a, if you uh, populate a map with key value pair, or if you check, you do an existence checking from a set, that the, the, those operations are container operations. So uh, first thing, even those statistical operations may look very simple. However, the uh, complexity is still there. Okay, at the machine level. Uh, so when you want to do existence check from a set, there are like a, there is a lot of things happens behind. So doing that is a, a lot slower than just uh, manipulating a single like a float number. So, and another thing is, if you do that in your acume clause or post acume clause, we know that in post acume or uh, uh, clause or acume clause, they happens on the vertexes and edges. And usually when we run the graph or analytic, it may involve hundreds of millions of edges and vertexes. In that case, all the operations defined in those acume clause or post acume clause, they are performed like a million, hundred million times. That means those expensive uh, like a container type operation will also be repeated like uh, that many number of times, okay? And another thing is, uh, okay, so the, the, this is the container operation, right? One thing we want to avoid. And that the other thing is defining container type vertex attached accumulators is very expensive. Why? Because First of all, it's a container, right? 
even you store nothing in the container, we still have the overhead and the memory allocation for that container type data structure. Because as you know, CSQL uh, query language is like after we install it, it actually will be compiled as C++ code, right? So we know that when we define the vertex attached accumulator, this kind of accumulator, they are defined for um, all the vertexes being traversed. So if today we traverse 100 million of vertexes and every each vertex will have this type of data structure defined there, okay? Then you can imagine how big is it if we define a container type accumulator, especially when you, during your graph traversal, you have to add elements to those containers. It just grows bigger and bigger, and it is on every each vertex is being traversed. It's very, it, it will grow very big. And uh, uh, so uh, imagine if like you are doing some graph traversal, one hop, two hop, too many, many hops, right? And uh, with this kind of vertex attached accumulators defined, it's like carrying a 100 pound uh, like a backpack on, on the solar while, while we do the graph traversal, right? This will really slow you down even if you, do, if you don't do anything, okay? So uh, now let's see how can we just avoid doing that, okay? So there are five things uh, I will talk about today for the uh, data structure optimization. So first is that we, uh, uh, I have an example, like how can we use, do like a fewer container operations? Because as I mentioned, there are two things really uh, that is related to data structure that can slow you down. And the first thing is the container operations, right? And uh, this is an example how we can avoid doing any container operation. So uh, let's look at this query, okay? So it takes a input vertex set named as forbidden set. This is the input parameter. And uh, we want to skip all the vertexes in the input set during our traversal, okay? So you can see in the first line, we have this forbidden set parameter defined as set of vertex. And then we start from somewhere and when we do the traversal, we say, okay, where T is not in the set, T is the alias of the target vertex. So I want to make sure every target vertex we collected is not in the set. This is the most intuitive way of writing this logic. However, where clause, we know that where clause happens on all the edges selected, right? It, it applies the filtering logic on every each edge selected. That means if in this select statement, we selected millions of edges and then this existence check of the target vertex in this set or not, will be performed a million times, okay? We know that the existence check is a set operation, which is slow. And if you do it for every each edge, then this, it will, like a, it will have some impact to your performance, right? So alternatively, we can actually trade some memory for performance, okay? So uh, let's see. We can, we can write, alternatively, we can write a query this way. So again, we take this set of vertex as the input, input parameter, and then we create a set, vertex set variable out of this input set. And then I start from, the name is for, forbid, right? And then I start from forbid in post queue post queue execute on every each vertex uh, of forbid, right? Then on every each input vertex, I do this logic, okay? I assign local accumulator is forbid to true, which is defined in the second line. It's an or queue, means it's a Boolean type, right? I assign the Boolean type, just give me a second. Okay, so I, I assign the Boolean type to true. Uh, so that which means 
every input vertex in this input set has this local variable, Boolean type local variable set equals to true. And later I can use this Boolean type value during a retroversal, right? You can see before I do I do existence check here in the where clause, right? And now I only check the value on my target vertex, which is a Boolean value, which is a lot faster than check the existence in the set. Okay, so by using a little bit more memory, uh, we actually are able to achieve a lot better performance. So we always have to trade something for something, right? So this is kind of like a technique. We trade the memory, we define more variables for better performance to avoid having any set operation. Okay, so second, uh, I want to talk about how to avoid using container type vertex attached accumulators. That's the sec second thing I, I, I mentioned in this list, right? The uh, so second thing is to define the local accumulators that is in, under container type. So how to do that? So this is another example. Like I say, uh, I want to have a query. The query visualize all the shortest passes between two input vertexes, okay? So intuitively, when we when we talk about say okay, I want to uh, uh, print the passes, right? Then we can define the pass, uh, stores all the passes between the vertexes, right? It's a local accumulator, and then when this is defined, you can see this is a set of edges, right? And then we start from input one. We have we take two inputs input one and input two, both of them are under what X type. And then I say, okay, use a while loop. I, I can just traverse layer after layer. Later, I will show you an animation how this happened. Okay, but now all we need to focus is this, right? We define a set of queue on every each edge on the, uh, on every each vertex uh, along the path. And then we populate the path. We send the path from the source vertex to the target vertex, and also add, we add a new edge collected to the target, uh, to the set on the target, right? So this is how we can do it. However, we know that this set accum of the vertex accumulator under set accum is very expensive, right? Uh, I'll show you that later. Uh, I have an animation about this, okay? And alternatively, we uh, we can avoid defining this expensive accumulator by just to define an integer on every each vertex, right? However, this one, the second query, it actually performs, it will traverse more edges. That means we are treating, we are treating the uh, complexity for better, uh, to more lightweighted data structure, right? So we traverse the graph twice so that we can avoid defining this set of queue. How to do that? Is that instead of we defining the path, we define a, uh, we define a integer type, that is a distance. So we keep tracking the distance from the originating vertex input one. So I start from input one, I go layer after layer with this while loop, and then I calculate the, 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 the distance to the input one for every each vertex until it meets input two, okay? And once we find the in, input two, we can trace back. We, again, we start from, uh, the first time we start from input one, right? And then second time we start from input two and to find every each vertex we have marked along the path and then collect the edge. I'll, expl I'll explain the logic here. Okay, so this is the first query. It will just carry the path around. Like for this vertex one, it will store the edge between input one and the vertex one, right? This is the edge between input one and the vertex one. And then at the second layer, the vertex three will store one, two, three, four edges on the vertex. And the uh, vertex four will store input, uh, like a, a two, also two edges here, right? And you can see the further you go, the longer the path you have to store on the vertex you just newly 
collected, right? And when we traverse the input two, we got all the passes, all the edges between input one and input two, we can output this part. That's the uh, logic when we define the set of Q. You can see we actually stored a lot of information uh, on every each vertexes and we have to carry out, like a, carry them around. That is not very efficient. However, for the second query, we can do it like this. We only mark the distance from the input, right? Like a vertex three is two hops away from input. Vertex seven is one hop away from input, right? And then in the third hop, we found the input two. And again, we start from input two. Then we say, okay, uh, in vertex three is distance two, has distance two, and the input two has distance three. That means vertex three is on the path to input one. Okay, then I collect this edge into the result like this. And then I go next hop. Then from vertex three, I, I, we figure that, okay, since vertex one and two are has distance one, that means these two are on the along the path, right? Then I collect this edge and this edge to the result, right? And then in the same way, we also collect these two edges in the result. So you can see both of the implementations can provide you the same result. However, one will need to, to will need to define very heavy data structure. So the benefit, so, and, and the, the second one only define very simple data structure. This is one integer on each vertex. Yeah, so in this case, we may traverse more edges, but we have a way lighter data structure. Therefore, you will have, you, uh, you, even you have higher complexity, you will still have like a better performance. And also you, you, you will use le a way less memory. And uh, uh, the third thing I want to talk, talk about is in the case, you, you absolutely need to use some containers, right? And uh, sometimes it's, a, it's faster to use list acume than set acume. But because list acume is faster for insertion, right? So set acume is faster for lookups, but slower for insertion. Because set acume has with a, uh, because the under the hood is actually hash set, set, right? You have to manage the hashing and the internal data structures. However, list is very straightforward. You just add a new element to the, to the rear of the list. It's very easy to do. So in the case that you, uh, you only want to store, an, 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 like a, there's no duplication is needed, right? Like if I want to store all the edges from one hop, there is no duplication at all. You don't need to do the do, 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 do duplication. Then you can just store them in a list, which will be faster than storing them in a set. Okay. And uh, the fourth thing I want to talk about is we can actually use bit vector for condition matching. In this example, we want to find the companies that are controlled by all input companies. Assuming we have an enterprise graph, right? One company is a parent company of another. One company is a subsidiary of another. So the parent company also have its parent company. So it's, a, 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 it's like a graph, right? It is multiple uh, levels, like, for, like the, uh, of the controlling relationship between the companies. So, in, in this graph, the question we want to ask is given the list or a set of companies, we want to find the subsidiaries or indirect subsidiaries that is controlled, indirectly controlled by all the input companies. Okay, so intuitively, we can write the query this way. We take a set of companies as an input, as an input and then we start from this input parameter. We create a vertex set variable start out of it, right? And then we start from the set and then we use a while loop. We just go layer after layer. 
and then we pass down its own ID. Like in this line, we store the set. We define a set here, right? It's a set of vertex, and this is a local set of queue. So this is a vertex attached set accumulator, right? And the initial value is the input company ID. And then with this while loop, I will push push down its IDs to its subsidiaries. So whenever a company in the company's local accumulator, it has all the input vertex enter enterprise IDs. That means the, set, the size of the set equals the input size. That means it is actually the subsidiary of the other all the input companies, right? Okay. So this is the intuitive way of writing this, and this is require you to use a set of queue. Okay, alternatively, we can avoid defining this by only defining an or queue on every each vertex. And you can see one thing is interesting, this is a or queue of the integer, right? So basically, this is not a regular, we don't use it like as a regular integer value, we use it as a bit vector. A bit vector, I mean, is something like this, the binary numbers, right? And then here, with this for each loop, for every vertex in the input set, this is the parameter set, right? For every vertex in the set, we assign it to a binary value, right? It's so namely, namely, it will be one, two, four, eight, sixteen. So each of these values will be corresponding to a, a, a binary a bit, bit vector. For example, one will be something like this, two will be something like this, and the four will be zero, 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 one, zero, zero, something like this, right? So this is one, this is two, and this will be four. So by assigning a binary value for each input, we can push down this binary value, right? If a company is a subsidiary of both the first and the second company, then it will have bit vector like this, okay? Because this digit stands for the first company, this digit stands for the second company, because they will be aggregated with all logic, okay? So this is the alternative way of doing this without having to define a container type local accumulator, but just define the integer on each vertex. Okay, let me uh, show you some animation about this. Okay, so uh, so this is the graph we we will use to perform this uh, 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 this analytic. So we start from company A, B, C, D, E, and then if we perform the logic defined in the first query, we have to populate the set on every each vertex we traversed. Right, basically the set means what like what parent company do you have? And then we push down the set and you can see it's growing bigger over time, right? It just gets bigger and bigger and you have to store it on every each vertex. And then for this guy, we found that it, the, the size of the set is five. That means it's indirectly, it has a pass to every each input vertexes, right? So this one is selected as a result and then go next half. And this one is also selected as a result. So this is the example for the first uh, query. And what if we do it with the second query? We only define the integer on each vertex and the each input has a different uh, binary value, right? Uh, so yes, you may figure that this has a limitation that we, can, we cannot have input size of larger than 64 because the integer type in, in telegraph in CSQL language is uh, under the into 64, okay? So that's, that might be one of the restrictions here. However, you can also consider to use multiple integers defined to that purpose. Then you have, can have more than 64, you can have 128, right? So in the same way, we push down this binary like bit vectors. Like for the, this guy, it's connected to both A and B, so he has two digits set to one, right? And again, we do the same thing. And here we figure that this company has its vector every digits of the bit vector set to one, right? And then we'll get it selected. And then we'll just keep push down. And uh, 
select the other company. Okay, so in this case, we actually really trade for the performance with nothing, right? Uh, the, the only thing you uh, you 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 lose maybe it just makes your query a little bit more complex, but the performance will be like uh, ten times faster than the left one. Okay. Okay, and uh, last thing, uh, so we should uh, uh, try to use uh, fewer strings because string is a lot more expensive than other primitive types. If possible, to you, 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 you can consider to use integer or vertex type uh, under the string type, since vertex, vertex type basically is also a 64-bit integer under the hood, okay? So if you want to collect a, a list, a list of vertex, uh, so we, uh, if, it's, if, if possible, you collect the vertex type, right? So usually when you uh, refer to the, instead of like a collect a string here, like this, you can consider to uh, collect the alias because the alias is under vertex type. And the vertex type is, uh, in C++, it is actually a uint64, okay? So it, it will be a, a, so a lot less expensive than string in this case. And especially when you do comparisons, if you only compare between the vertexes, right? Then uh, it's just the integer comparison. But if you do like a comparison between the string attributes, then it's a string compression, uh, comparison it will be a lot uh, uh, slower than the string uh, integer comparison, okay? Okay, that's uh, everything, uh, all the items I want to talk about re regarding the data structure optimization. Uh, just to recap a little bit, re real quick. So there are five things. First, use as, use fewer container type operations, that is existence check, populating the map, populating the set, and then also define, try to define fewer vertex attached container types. And then list acume is faster than set acume. Use, you can use bit vector for condition matching instead of having to define a set of the vertexes. And then you can also try to use fewer strings you can use vertex type or integer types uh, if possible. Okay, so that's the other point I want to cover about uh, data structure um, optimization. And uh, th since this is also the last episode of this query writing best practice, and this far we have covered totally six topics from thinking in CSQL language, that is what to think about when you start to write a qu query where do you start from? What accumulators do you want to define? And uh, uh, like what edge types do you want to use, right? And then I talk about traversal plan design. That is how to define the optimal traversal plan that you can traverse the least amount of vertex and edges. Also, and then after that, I talk about memory optimization. Like uh, what operations are memory consuming and what are the possible solutions to reduce that? And then I talk about the parallelization, how, what, what operations are sequential and uh, what are the like a mechanism of parallel processing and the data storage uh, of Tiger Graph and then how to parallelize this, the process in order to fully utilize the hardware resource. And also I talk about the pre-processing, how to add new attributes and the edges in order to boost your uh, query performance. And then I, today I talk about data structure. So after going through all these topics, there's really basically uh, nothing else I have on this uh, query optimization or query writing best practice top topic. It really has everything. So if you haven't watched uh, all, all, all the videos in this series, I do encourage you to go over them because uh, this, these are the, uh, the points. Um, these are the experience I, 
I learned from all the past uh, pro projects. If you are you, you 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 can master all these techniques, you can really like write the the queries with the best performance and the, uh, the like a me memory utilization. Okay, so that's uh, everything I have today. So if you have any questions, please uh, post it in the uh, Q and A. So I think we still have plenty of time to. Uh, to answer your questions. You can post any of your questions regarding XSQL or this uh, query writing best practice, okay? Maybe just cover the uh, the rest of the slides, Shinyu, and then if people have questions, we can answer them. Yeah. Uh, do you, Do you want to talk about this? Really? Oh yeah. So if you do have uh, questions, um, we have some resources for you online. We have our community forum um, where you can uh, sign up and and chat with people on um, on our community, and then we also have a chat service via discord um and then we also have weekly developer office hours every thursday at 11 a.m so um let's go to the next slide should you we have some additional resources where you can sign up for cloud we'll email you all of these uh links as well uh and as well as the links to all of the past g sql best practices recordings that we have um, and these are just the links to do our test online demo, test drive, and then our developer edition and um, our graph guru scripts. So again, we'll send you the links to that. And I think that's all we have for today. If there's no questions. Yeah, I don't think there is. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We're going to go ahead and end the call and email you um, the, the deck and the recording and the links. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.